macOS Sequoia is out and it brings a ton of features to Mac like AI built and better window management, smarter notes, and much improved Siri. But even with all the new features, there are still apps worth installing. And the first app is called Portal, and it's a must have if you're like me and want to be super relaxed and focused when you work. What this app does is act like a supercharged wallpaper engine. With one click, I can switch my wallpapers to something calm and relaxing like this waterfall. The quality of the video is actually insane. Everything's super detailed and high res. Along with the video comes the audio. The app supports spatial audio, so you'll hear all the background noises of nature. The app offers three different surroundings to choose from, and all the additional ones can be purchased separately. And it doesn't interfere with the default wallpapers. It kind of works on top of them. And for the ultimate cleanliness of it all, in the settings, I can turn off the desktop icons. This is a simple but pretty neat app, a must have for office workers. But no Mac is complete without the best screensaver, Flicklow. This again is a very simple app. It's not even an app, really. It's more like an archive with one file that you need to double click. This will open screensaver settings where you only need to scroll down and pick the last screensaver on the list, and that's all. Every time you leave your Mac unattended, this stylish screensaver will pop up. I just love how aesthetic it is. So clean, so minimalistic. It's not distracting, and I feel like it would be perfect for any interior and any situation. Again, it's absolutely free. Mac OS Sequoia has a feature when you take a window, drag it to one side, and it snaps to one of the predetermined places. But the OS won't roll out publicly until September, and until then, you'd need an app for that. So I recommend Wince. Once you install it and give it all the permissions it asks for, the settings will pop up. There you can turn it on or off entirely, or just some of its features. I recommend turn everything on just to get the full experience. So check this out. Here I have a couple different apps opened. I can just take any one and drag it to the top of the screen where a pop-up will appear. And let me pick one of the suggested layouts. The app suggests four different layouts, and I think it is more than enough for a regular person. But if you want, you can always go into settings and record keyboard shortcuts for additional layouts. And yes, these keyboard shortcuts are really cool. Instead of dragging the window, you can just set up a shortcut, not only for different layouts, but also for quick actions like hiding all the windows, switching to the next or previous display and so on. But personally, I especially like the shake feature, which basically lets me pick any window and shake it to minimize all other windows. It's much faster than going through each one and minimizing it by hand. And in case you have too many apps open, you will like the dock preview feature, which shows you a miniature for any opened app when you hold a pointer over it. This app is also free, but only comes with a seven day trial. The next app is also super simple, yet really useful, Hand Mirror. If you're constantly in and out of meetings, sometimes it can be hard to keep track of how you look, what gets in the shot, how the lighting is, and so on. And all the Hand Mirror does is showing you the webcam feed every time you click on the icon in the menu bar. And that's it, nothing more. It doesn't record you, it just shows your webcam. So before before each meeting, you can just click on the icon, do a quick check, and join the meeting looking like a star. Again, a very simple, straightforward, and a free app that won't hurt to have. And if online meetings are a part of your daily job, you need to see this. ChatGPT built into this audio doc. It's called HiDoc H1, and they're sponsoring this video. It automatically transcribes all the spoken information and conveniently organizes it into structured summaries while also highlighting all the important bits of info. And trust me, when it comes to meetings of any sort, having good summaries can be life-saving. With HiDoc, it's practically impossible to overlook important details or ideas, to fall behind in your note-taking, or get lost in all the gibberish you wrote. It has bi-directional microphones, and you should hear this noise canceling. The voice sounds super good. During a demo, you can exit by pressing the hang up call button at any time. Let's start with an introduction to the HiDoc brand with keyboard typing and construction noise. No matter where you are, the voice will always be crisp and rich. But that's still not all. I use an iPhone, right? And you know what I hate about it? There's no easy way to record my phone calls. With HiDoc, I can just connect my phone to it, and boom, calls get recorded, and notes get taken all automatically. And to make things even better, HiDoc is also a powerful 11-in-1 hub for all my devices. It supports power delivery of up to 118 watts, has dual 4K HDMI ports, Ethernet, and much more. This is by far the most unusual device I've tried in a while, but it's definitely one of the most useful ones as well. And by the way, from June 1st to June 25th, 
there is gonna be a launch campaign of High Dots. So be sure to subscribe on their website to stay updated on the official launch. A link to it will be in the description. Okay, you know what else needs work on macOS? It's archiving feature. Sure, you can easily archive anything in one click, but macOS doesn't let you change the format, the compression, nothing. So I think Keka is a better alternative. First, supports a ton of formats from popular zip to much less known AAR. It also has five different compression levels ranging from no compression at all to the highest compression possible. The speed of archiving obviously depends on how compressed you want your files to be, but I found that leaving it set to normal produces the fastest results with the optimal balance for size and speed. The app can also unarchive, which is quite expected. To archive anything, I can either drag and drop the files to the app window or right click on the selected files, open with and pick the app from the list. Really, this is a very simple but super useful app, especially if you plan on working with zip archives. Now, what video player do you use? QuickTime, it's fast and it comes by default, but it's limited in supported formats and features. BLC, good, but can be tricky sometimes. I suggest you try INA. This player is not only free, but also has more features than any video player I mentioned before. It supports a ton of formats and has a couple cool features. For example, can work in picture in picture mode, which will be super useful to those of you who like watching something while working. At any moment, you can take a high res screenshot of anything you're watching, which is cool. The app also gives precise control of the aspect ratio of the video you're watching, lets you rotate the video, adjust its speed, and even tweak its colors. If the video looks dark, you can manually increase the brightness, making everything more legible. Or how about tweaking the equalizer for the audio track? Add to that the ability to automatically search for subtitles for anything you're watching. Honestly, I don't know where it gets these subtitles from and probably I don't wanna know, but if you like to watch movies you've downloaded and they don't have subtitles built in, this feature can be a lifesaver. Ina is a great app for any Mac. And if you've bought a 14 or 16 inch MacBook Pro, the next app is for you. Did you know that the maximum brightness of your Mac isn't actually the highest one it's capable of? The displays of 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros have a default max brightness of 600 nits, but for HDR content can go up to 1600 nits. With the Vivid app, we can force the Mac to be in HDR mode all the time, drastically increasing brightness. No need to tweak the settings or do anything like that. You just find the sun icon in the menu bar and turn Vivid on and that's it. Your brightness has been increased. It's really hard to overstate how big the difference there is. After using the Mac on such high brightness for a couple minutes can be difficult to go back to the standard one. And in case you're wondering whether such high brightness will damage the display, it won't. Apple purposefully created these displays with the support of HDR, a technology that basically makes the LEDs get much brighter in certain parts of the display when it's needed. So us making them brighter on purpose for a long period of time practically does nothing to the display's lifespan. Though I would still recommend being cautious and use this app only outdoors when you're working under the sunlight, just to be extra careful. But hey, we're all about being productive here, aren't we? So let me show you something cool. Side Notes adds pull-out notes that you can access anytime. Here you can add your notes, create to-do lists with checkboxes, shopping lists, and so on. You can add images as notes, leave little reminders to yourself, and, and all sorts of wizardry. To add an note, I just click on the plus sign and start typing. If I tap here, a menu will pop up with different formatting options. Every note can also be color coded. For example, you can set one color for your word to-do list and another one for regular notes. So if you're really into aesthetics, you can make your notes look absolutely epic. All notes can be organized into folders. And in case you're looking for something particular, there is an option to search for a note. It's a really cool app that many people don't realize they need, especially productivity oriented people like me. All notes can be synced with iCloud and it even supports Apple shortcuts. Great app, definitely worth checking out. As I already said, macOS isn't perfect. And one of the features the Windows has, but macOS doesn't, is the precise control over the volume. macOS only lets you control the overall volume output and that's all. However, if we install SoundSource, the app will give us far more controls. For example, I was controlling not only the output volume, but also the input volume and the volume of all sound effects, such as notifications. It also lets me quickly choose the device that I want to use for output or input of the audio. But the best part is that I can control the volume of individual apps. For example, 
and make Safari or Chrome quieter while leaving quick time at full volume. For each app, there are also audio settings such as volume overdrive or equalizer. So if I'm watching the movie but doesn't sound right, I can adjust the audio manually in a couple of clicks. This app is practically indispensable if you want to use your Mac to its fullest. Now I simply have to ask you, how much storage does your MacBook have? As we all know, the majority of people buy the cheapest config, which leaves them with around 200 gigs of free space right out of the box. In this case, proper file management becomes crucial. I found an app that helps partially solve this problem without forcing you to delete important files. Clop takes a file and makes it smaller, just like that. It doesn't compress them into archives, it just makes them smaller. When the app is launched, it runs in the background, I can just select a file and drag it into the window that appears on the screen to optimize it. And check this out, the original file size was 17 megabytes, but its optimized version is less than 10. All that without changing the resolution or the quality of the image, the same can be done to videos and PDFs. The app itself is very customizable, letting you specify which file formats you want to work with, how it should treat different file types, and even create automations for file optimization. This is a really fantastic app. And the best part, it's totally free. There are so many great apps that you can install on your Mac to make it truly yours. And to know more about that, you know what to do. Click here. Thank you for watching and see you next time.